Hi everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So in today's video, I'm talking about 10 small things that I've been incorporating into my life in order to try and improve it. I'm always looking for ways to live more mindfully, more intentionally, and overall just more joyfully. So I wanted to share a few things that have been working for me lately. The first thing that I've been doing lately is a daily brain declutter. I've also heard it called like brain clear or brain dumping, but it's where I take two or three minutes at the end of the day and just get everything that's cluttering up my brain out onto a piece of paper, or in my case, onto a little notebook tablet. And mostly for me, this is a to-do list or things I don't wanna forget about, but it really is everything. Like if I wanna remember that I wanna wash my hair tomorrow, I will write that down. It's really helped me improve my sleep and how quickly I'm able to fall asleep at night because I feel like I've attended to all of those thoughts that tend to really kind of bubble up when you're sort of sitting still and trying to fall asleep at the end of the night. And sometimes I'll use this brain declutter the next morning as a way to make my to-do list for the next day. Some things end up, you know, just getting erased. All I needed to do was get it out of my brain and somewhere else, and that ends up being enough. But overall, just taking a couple minutes at the end of the day and just sort of decluttering anything that's really noisy up here. The second thing that I've done recently is made a praise folder on my computer. So I'm one of those people, and I think this happens to a lot of people who you hear praise and you appreciate it, but then you might also hear something negative later in the day or later in the week or month. And for some reason, that's so much louder than all of the positive things that were said. So in order to try and find a little bit more balance, I've decided to save the praise every time it comes to me. So if somebody you know, gives me a compliment in life or in work, I will write it down and who said it and when they said it so that if I'm having a day where I'm feeling really overwhelmed by something that didn't go well or a negative comment or if I'm just feeling negative in general, I can go through and sort of read all of those positive comments and it's a good sort of grounding and reminder that you know, the negative doesn't have to be so loud. The third thing I've been doing is trying to become a better listener. And I've been doing this mostly because I realized how important it is to me to feel like I'm being listened to. So I want to do the same for the people in my life. So I've been trying to first be really not distracted when I'm having a conversation with someone. And that can be any conversation, right? You can be having a really serious, deep conversation where you don't want to be distracted. But also if someone's telling you about their day or you know, a conversation they had with someone else recently or an issue that they're having, you also want to be really present for that too. So the first thing I've been doing is making sure that my phone is nowhere around me. So if it is near me, it's turned over or maybe it's in a completely separate room when I'm having a conversation. And the second is to really start to shift my mindset when I'm listening. I found that I am the type of person where if I'm hearing somebody's story, I'm immediately reflecting that story on my own life. And that is one way to sort of understand and empathize with somebody, but I would find myself reacting with my own sort of situation and my own reflection of what that person was going through. So I've tried to really flip it so that the conversation doesn't sort of circle back to, to me in any way, but I'm really starting to ask questions instead of sort of sharing my similar experience or sharing what I think about that, but really trying to get more information by asking more and better questions and just being really engaged in the conversation, you know, let somebody know that you're listening, look at their face, look at their eyes, nod along with them. My hope is that the skill will help me deep in relationships, but also make me just feel more connected to people. Number four on the list is to own my wake up. So if you've been around this channel a while, you might know that I work from home. I live on the West Coast of the United States, but I work on East Coast hours, which are three hours ahead. So my work day most days starts either at 5.45 or 6 a.m. And historically in my life, I've been really into morning routines. They're really important to me. It's really foundational for me having a great day, but I'm having a really hard time holding on to a morning routine with this work schedule. So right now I'm really trying to reclaim my morning in a way that doesn't require me to wake up before the clock begins with a five. I just, I cannot do it. I cannot wake up in the four o'clock hour. It has to be at least five o'clock which doesn't leave a lot of time, but I'm trying to remind myself that it only takes a few minutes. I've been struggling with having what feels to me like very little time in the morning and giving that time structure has been really difficult for me. 
but I recently started using the Aura app, who is also the sponsor of today's video. And it's really helped give me a little bit of structure to that very small amount of time that I have in the morning. If you haven't heard of Aura, it's this sort of all-in-one mindfulness and well-being app. It has thousands of meditations, but it's more than just a meditation app. It also has cognitive behavioral therapy, life coaching, stories, breath work, spirituality. All of the content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists around the world. I've personally been using it for gratitude and motivation. What I love is that there's so much variety and personalization. When you first start the app, there's an intake and you can tailor the experience for you and what you want and what you're trying to work on, but also with how much time you have. So I did in my intake that I only have three to 10 minutes. So everything that the app serves up to me is tailored for that time frame. I use the guided meditation and breath work almost every morning and usually listen to the life coaching segments while I'm doing a movement practice. There are customized recommendations designed specifically for me and the things that I told the app are important to me. But I also use the app during my workday as well. They have a huge music library and I've been using the focus music to really keep me productive during my workday. It's kind of like Spotify for the mind and soul. Aura has hundreds of expert guides from diverse backgrounds. And unlike traditional meditation apps that give you just a few coaches, on Aura you can always find guides that you resonate with. Aura really has helped me reclaim my mornings and just increase my overall motivation and well-being. You can get started with Aura completely free using the discount link in my description box down below. I'll also put it up on screen here. And the first 500 people to use that link will get a free trial of Aura and an exclusive 25% off. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Number five on the list is to make a voice connection. So historically I've been a really big texter or even just corresponding with someone through DMs or something like that. But I found that it's much more nourishing for me if I pick up the phone and call somebody. Having that actual exchange and voice on voice contact makes me feel a lot more connected to the people in my life. But I don't always have time to actually pick up the phone or have a, a long phone conversation, but I have started using voice memos a lot lately in replacement of text. So if you don't use voice memos, it's literally where you just like record a message for someone, you can send it and it comes up in a text thread the same way that a text would, except it's your voice instead of just words that you've typed out. There's a lot more feeling, there's a lot more emotion, and there's a lot more connection in the voice memo. And I've done the same thing with voicemails. I've been more conscious to actually leave voicemails. I know a lot of people don't listen to voicemails anymore, but I found that I actually really do enjoy getting a voicemail and hearing somebody's voice. So just trying to find little ways, again, to deepen connections with the people in my life. Number six is to make sure that I'm challenging myself, but at the same time, embracing failure. And these don't have to be big challenges, right? You don't have to make big sweeping change in your life or push yourself super hard to feel the benefit of it. The reason why this came to my mind is that this is actually the second video that I've recorded this week. The first one, I tried to do a completely different format and different kind of video that I've ever done before. I was super excited about it. I had it all planned out. I like storyboarded the whole thing. It was gonna be beautiful or so I thought, but it was also gonna be a challenge for me. I'd never really shot video like that before. It was gonna have some like voiceover recording kind of thing and some sound effects sort of things. And it was gonna be cool, you guys. And I fully failed. I looked back at the footage and it, it was bad. It was not good. It was not at all what I wanted. The vision that I had in my head was not at all what I was able to capture. It, it was a full failure. I had to completely come up with a new idea for a video and re-record the entire thing. But I learned so much from just challenging myself to do that. Now, if I ever go back and try and do that type of video again, I've learned so many things not to do. And there were some good learnings too. Like some of the things I'm like, oh, that came out kind of cool. But there's so much learning and so much growth in the challenge and in the failure that it's such a worthwhile thing to incorporate into your life even if you're scared to do it. Number seven is to allow yourself to take itty bitty breaks. I'm talking real small, like 15 seconds to a minute, somewhere in there. I found that I can still sort of maintain focus on what I'm doing and jump back to what I'm doing pretty quickly, even if I allow myself just a few seconds to look up 
and take a few deep breaths. Or, you know, if my dog walks into the room, give myself permission to step away from my computer, crouch down, give her a couple scritches, a couple kisses, or just look outside at the view that's out my window, or give my husband a hug, or just walk outside and take one deep breath in the fresh air, and then go right back in. I used to think that any break meant that I was not gonna be able to get back focused, right? Whatever I was doing, that momentum would be gone. And I'm finding that these little itty bitty breaks, these really small, less than a minute breaks, actually help me, right? I'll take three deep breaths and I'll come back and I'll have a new idea or I'll be refreshed. So giving myself permission to not be laser focused with no breaks. Number eight is dedicated time for sunshine. So I've been making some dedicated time, usually like 10 to 15 minutes, where I just sit in the sun. It's another time where I've been using the Aura app. I like to listen to some of the stories that they have and the life coaching that they have. But to me, getting sunshine and making sure that I'm getting vitamin D is as critical as a movement practice or a meditation practice in terms of my overall health. Speaking of a movement practice, number nine is redefining what a workout is to me. I've always loved fitness. Since I was a teenager, I've loved to work out or run or do really vigorous yoga or hit workouts. I like to move my body, but I also had an interesting framing of like what a workout is is, right? To me, that meant my heart rate was really high and I was sweating really hard. And that's when I felt like I could check the box of working out. I've really tried to soften that recently, especially in the past like 12 months or so, because what's nourishing to me doesn't always mean that I am dripping in sweat. It doesn't always mean that I'm out of breath. Like, yes, that is good for my body, but I can also say that I worked out if I did a really nourishing but gentle yoga practice. Like that's a workout. I don't have to do something else in my day just because I didn't go run four miles or whatever it is. A resting form of movement is also a workout and I'm trying to really kind of reframe that in my brain. Number 10 in the last habit on the list is to floss your teeth. Not literally, but metaphorically, but also literally. You, you should floss your teeth, it's good for your teeth. But what I mean by that is when I first started to be really purposeful about incorporating healthy habits into my life and just living more intentionally, I started with flossing my teeth. I'd always wanted to be the kind of person who flossed their teeth and never could do it. I'd never stuck with it. But one day I just woke up and decided, Today, I'm gonna to start flossing my teeth and I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. And that was kind of like my first habit. And from there, it became really easy to stack habits on top of that, right? Once I made that singular commitment of flossing my teeth and figured out that, hey, doing things for me feels really good, it was really easy for me to keep doing things for myself that felt really good. I started eating better. I started practicing yoga. I started recognizing toxic relationships in my life. All these things stacked on top of the fact that I took three minutes out of my day for myself and realized how good that felt. And even to this day now, flossing my teeth reminds me of that. It reminds me of that person. It reminds me of why I do the things that I do. So it's a good kind of check back in with myself. So not necessarily probably flossing your teeth for all of you, but figuring out what your spark is. What, what is that thing that makes you remember and recognize why taking care of yourself feels so good. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.